Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Emily and this is a virtual gallery visit brought to you by the Missouri Historical Society as part of our May Homeschool Day. Our theme this month is Medical Missouri and that topic has never been more timely. We will spend some time this morning looking at St. Louis's role in pandemics of the past and think about how the lessons learned back then prepared us for today's medical challenges. Medical knowledge has come a long way since an outbreak of cholera in 1849, which killed around 6,000 St. Louis residents, or approximately 10% of the population. Cholera is actually caused by bacteria that gets into drinking water, but doctors in St. Louis didn't know about bacteria yet. In just a minute, pause the video and answer this question. What do you know about germs and bacteria? Pause the video and answer that question now but be sure to come back to the video after you discuss your answers. Great job! Nowadays, bacteria and germs are pretty widely known and understood, but they hadn't been discovered yet when cholera struck, so doctors in 1849 had to come up with other reasons this was happening. Originally, cholera was thought to be caused by bad air called miasmas, and doctors tried to prevent people from breathing in the bad air. Some other possible reasons they thought could be thunderstorms causing imbalances in the body or the consumption of sauerkraut, alcohol, and ripe vegetables. They actually weren't too far off on the thunderstorms. The spring of 1849 saw a heavy amount of rainfall, which washed out the limestone caves where sewage was dumped. This overflow resulted in a nasty open sewer inside the city limits, jokingly named Kaiser's Lake after the St. Louis city engineer at the time. The sauerkraut speculation was just xenophobia or fear of foreigners because large numbers of German immigrants were coming to the city at this time. The immigrants were more likely to catch and die of this disease because they lived in closer quarters and had less ability to escape the city. Because doctors believed it was the bad air causing the disease, quarantine and keeping healthy people separate from sick people became a common practice so people wouldn't breathe the so-called contaminated air. Wealthier residents left the city completely, but most people were left to fend for themselves in a place where the very air around you seemed to become deadly. For people really in need, the city established a quarantine station on an island in the Mississippi River called Quarantine Island, which you can see on the map on the screen. Ships coming into St. Louis had to stop at Quarantine Island and be checked for traces of disease before they could dock in the city. Eventually, the bad air was actually traced to the water. Shoto's Pond, which many people used for drinking water, bathing water, and washing water, had become contaminated with sewage waste and factory runoff. By draining the pond and Kaiser's Lake, the sources of contamination were removed from the water and cholera stopped spreading in the city. St. Louis then instituted programs to clean and sanitize the water in St. Louis, and cholera outbreaks became much less frequent and severe. Today, St. Louis has some of the cleanest drinking water in the United States. In a moment, pause the video and answer this question. How did the cholera outbreak of 1849 change the way doctors treated sick people? Go ahead and pause the video now. By the 1900s, doctors knew diseases like cholera were caused by bacteria in drinking water and could be controlled by improving living conditions and providing access to clean water supplies. However, they also attributed virus-based illnesses like influenza to the same factors. Viruses wouldn't be discovered until the 1930s, which would be too late to help St. Louisans during the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918. In just a moment, Pause the video and answer this question. How do you protect yourself from getting a cold? Go ahead and pause the video now, and I'll see you again when you're finished discussing your answers. The influenza, or Spanish flu, outbreak in 1918 was particularly scary. Unlike past outbreaks that put older people and children at highest risk, this virus affected healthy young adults. Doctors struggled to understand what caused the flu and therefore how to treat it. 
some doctors recommended washing your nose out with alcohol twice a day, which wouldn't cure your influenza, but would probably give you quite a headache. Unlike bacterial illnesses like cholera, viruses like influenza can be passed through the air and can be spread through coughing, sneezing, or touching. Because doctors didn't know this and assumed the flu was bacterial, and because they weren't sure completely how to prevent the flu from spreading, they recommended wearing a mask and washing your hands frequently. The mask stopped people from breathing bad air and washing their hands killed the germs. These are excellent public health recommendations and kept people healthy in normal times, but it didn't stop the spread of the Spanish influenza virus because people who lived in close proximity, such as a dormitory, a military barracks, or public housing, were still coughing and sneezing around each other. The St. Louis Health Commissioner, Dr. Max C. Starkloff, came up with a brand new idea. He instituted a citywide mandate to close public spaces in St. Louis such as schools, theaters, and churches, with the aim of keeping people from being in close proximity and thus curbing the spread of influenza. The city health department also issued the following directions to residents. If you must go about, avoid gatherings of persons, crowded streetcars, elevators, etc. Do not sneeze, cough, or spit unless you protect your nose or mouth with a handkerchief. Remember, your cold under other conditions is a trivial matter, is now a public menace. Well persons are advised to avoid crowds, to sleep in well-ventilated rooms, to avoid using common cups and towels, and to wash the hands frequently. This pamphlet showed these recommendations and others designed to keep people safe from illness. In a moment, pause the video and answer this question. What recommendations from this pamphlet do we still follow today to keep ourselves healthy? Pause the video now. This advice worked remarkably well. St. Louis's death rate from influenza was much lower than other American cities that didn't close down their public spaces. St. Louis lost 2,000 people to influenza, which is still a high number, but very, very low compared to New Orleans, which lost 32,000. Public health officials from all over the country studied St. Louis and copied its approach to stopping the spread of viral illnesses. One fact not widely known, Max Starkloff was the son of a doctor who had lived through the cholera epidemic of 1849 and saw the effectiveness of Quarantine Island on keeping cases lower than they could have been. He used that example to come up with the strategy of closing public spaces during the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918. It's the best example of how past pandemics can inform present practice. Today, we see the effects of these same policies, quarantines, masks, and public space closures in our approach to COVID-19. We know it's not easy to follow a quarantine mandate, wear a mask, or keep oneself home from fun activities. But these things keep people safe. And we salute the courage of St. Louis doctors and public health officials who put these new policies in place in 1849 and 1918. The same courage that kept us safe all these years later. Thank you for learning with me today. You can check out our other gallery stops and virtual learning activities for Medical Missouri on our website. You can find the link down below. Also check out our new History Exploration Days coming to you next school year. To learn more, click the link in the description. Don't forget to tag us with any questions, comments, or things you've created using hashtag MHSLearn. And above all, remember to keep making history. Bye.